The views expressed by the speakers are their own and neither their employers nor the worshipful company of information technologists and its subsidiaries are responsible for them. I'll just, I'm, I'm sure that um, lots of you don't know very much about NIGO, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'll tell you what, um, we, what lockdown did to us, and I'm sure there'll be an, an awful lot of um, similar experiences there. Um, I'll show you the thing that we invented and rolled out quite quickly, which we've called the NIGO Virtual Academy. Um, and I'll tell you where we've got to with it today. So let me start with um, a few facts about NIGO. And of course, we're much, much smaller than um, the National Theatre, much smaller than the Arts Council. Um, with, though we are one of their national portfolio organisations, but possibly that will make us a bit more like um, some of the people listening to this call. So um, we're a charity. We were founded 55 years ago. We are an NPO. We get 125,000 a year from um, the Arts Council. And what we've been for all of our lives is a world-class, a really fine 24-piece youth jazz orchestra. And one of the reasons the quality is so high is that the maximum age is 25. So the typical member of the Nigel Jazz Orchestra is a 22, 23, 24-year-old conservatoire student or graduate uh, playing at a very, very high level. Um, alongside that, we have for a good 15 years run an academy in London. It now has um, five ensembles that meet every week, um, round about 90 students um, in total across them. So that's a group of 90 young people in a, currently in a school in London um, every Saturday, enthusiastically practicing jazz because they like it. About six or seven years ago, we decided that we'd try and turn ourselves from simply a world-class jazz orchestra with a bit of London education into the National Jazz Education Organization. And we want to level the national playing field in jazz education, which is terribly spotty. It just depends where you're born, whether there's any jazz education going. And whatever you think about classical music education in this country, and it, it's got its problems, wherever you are, there'll be somebody who can tell you how to get into the National Youth Orchestra. That's not the case with NIGO. So over the last five or six years, um, we've, we've grown to have about 100 national partners, mostly the statutory body, the, the music education hubs, there's 123 of them. And we partner, this is very much our model, this is a, na a national movement that we want to bring into existence and stimulate and catalyze, but we don't want to own it, we don't want to run it. We think that these things work much better when local people run local things in their own environment. Of course, these 100 partners are at various levels of expertise, and the top tier is what we call regional academies, and I've listed um, the first five there. Um, and you'll notice that they're not in Birmingham or Manchester or Leeds. They're in smaller places where jazz provision is noticeably missing, and the local people want Nigel's help. Last proper working year, you can see the numbers there, we managed to do we delivered over 200 workshops, around about 8,000 students in that year. And, and those are all part of local programs that we contributed to. As I said, we're pretty small. We turn over just under three quarters of a million. And that's a mixture of earned income, arts council, trusts and foundations, private philanthropy, and a bit of corporate, um, including the Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music. And I, I listed that there just so that people know we've got their, um, their backing. We run, like many charities, um, on very limited resources. We try to have three months reserves in the bank. And by the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, we thought we knew what we were doing. We thought we more or less got it right. Let's just do more of it. And of course, try and improve it as we go along. So that's where we were with plan A. And then of course, along comes lockdown. And we realized, and, and I, we spelled it out to ourselves as a team, we cannot deliver any of the commitments that we've made, whether it's to earn income, whether it's to help our partners around the country, um, whether it's to deliver workshops, CPD, whatever it is, we couldn't do any of them. And we had the simple, answer, uh, simple choice, either give the money back, which nobody really wanted us to do, they want us to spend it, or come up quickly with an online plan B. And, and that's what we did. So this is, um, this is very much a case study of a plan B. Social media comes into it, this is, but this is much more about making use of digital technology. So we thought we'd um, focus our decision making on a few ideas. We thought we have to use what's unique to Niger. What are we 
un unique in and that other people don't do. Don't let's duplicate. There's tons and tons and tons of how to play your guitar, your violin, your piano, your drums, whatever on, on the internet. It's got wonderful, wonderful resources teaching you how to play your instrument. We don't want to duplicate that. We wanted to do something that wouldn't involve copyright and permissions and any of that stuff, because that can take ages. We wanted to get it out quickly to our, it is a national community, it, it's small, but it's a lot of pockets of very keen, enthusiastic people around the country who suddenly couldn't meet and rehearse. And, and, and you all have got your own experience of that in, in whatever arts field you're in. And we wanted to get something out to them quickly we don't have much money, so we had to use our own people. We couldn't go and spend it on consultants or whatever. But what we could do is we could say to our existing funders, please, can we spend the money that you've given us on plan B in instead of plan A? And God bless them, they said yes. So we did go ahead and do plan A, uh, plan B. And before I go to the next slide, I'm going to apologize for the fact that it says something really simple, very basic, but you have to get it to see what's different about Nigel. Nigel does not teach young musicians how to play their instrument. It teaches them how to play in a band with other young instruments, other young musicians. And um, that's a really vital difference. We don't teach you how to play your sax. Somebody else has to do that. But why does somebody learn to play the sax? so they can play in a band. And that's what we do. Nigel has always been the gateway to the profession or the gateway to playing in a band. And what the challenge we had was, how do we let young people who can't meet and play in a band together, find a way of playing in a band while at home? And the answer is the Nigel Virtual Academy and the main component, Nigel minus one, easily and freely available to anyone who wants it. You just get it on your laptop or your phone. And Nigel minus one, the simple concept, and I'm going to show it to you, is that you can download the full might of the National Youth Jazz Orchestra playing away. And whatever your instrument is, you can mute that and you can play along with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra in the comfort of your own home. Now, obviously, it's a quite a bit more um, sophisticated than that. There's lots of levels of it. Um, I'm just going to pick one example to show you. Um, so you get the idea. So you're going to hear some music. You're going to see the sort of thing that a young person can do from home. And um, I'm going to end with a four and a half minute teaching video by one of our many expert um, associate educators, just to give you a feeling for the sort of resources um, that we've got available um, and, and the way we can help people. We don't just distribute digital um, resources, we try and give them help with it. So here goes swapping to the Nigel Virtual Academy. This is its landing page. Um, Chris, again, I'm just checking with you that you can see everything and it all looks good. Just give me a thumbs up. You don't need to say anything. That's, uh, I'll use the voice. Yeah, that's fine. Is that. So we've got four components to this virtual academy, and you'll see it's got a it's got a deliberately retro look. We slung it together over a few weeks. We made the decisions instantly. That let's make it look like this. No user panels, no focus groups. We just did it. And the one I'm going to show you is the minus one page. So we're going to go across to that, and here you will see the picture is um, the the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. Actually, that's in Air Studios, George Martin Studios in Belsize Park. There's our artistic director, Mark Armstrong, um, conducting the members. There's the trumpet section of the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. Here's the back of the, the trombone section, making a recording that we own. No copyright issues, no permissions, no arrangement fees. We, we own this. Now, to explain how you can download the resources that are here. I just want you to, I'm going to give you um, a minute to read these words to explain what we're doing here, because this is what any young student is going to read. So I'm going to stop talking for 20 seconds and just give you the chance to read those three paragraphs. And I'm going to have a drink of coffee. So let's imagine you're a 15 year old trumpet player in Darlington and you've read that and you think, what is this thing about the download? And here are two ways you can download. Backing tracks are quite complex, which require you to do a bit of mixing and a little bit of a portable studio at home. And let me tell you, lots of 15 year old young musicians with a smartphone can do exactly that on their smartphone. Play alongs are pre-cooked. They've been done already and they've been ready mixed. So we have now, I'm now going to show you 
18 of these and I'm going to take you into the end one. Um, so I'm just going to wind down through this uh, through this page so you can see the sorts of things we've got available. Some of them are new compositions that we have um, commissioned composers to write and commissioned musicians to record. So we have been able to help musicians and composers and arrangers to earn a living during the pandemic. And some of these are um, jazz classics that we've already uh, recorded and that we already own. And you'll probably be able to work out which is what. So that first one we commissioned, A Night in Tunisia is a famous Dizzy Gillespie tune, God Bless the Child, the famous Billy Holiday song, and so on and so on. I'm going to whiz you down to the bottom one, which is something that we um, commissioned called Yes Please. This is at a junior level. And as well as being able to download it like that or like that, and here are the charts, the complete music for all the instruments and the conductor chart, all there, all available. You can go straight to a resource called SoundCloud, which I'm sure many of you will know, and I'm actually going to do that. We're going to go into SoundCloud and you'll see the fact that we've got Yes Please available with various instruments missing from it. So I'm going to jump into SoundCloud. Here it comes. And I'm just going to pause it. And you can see that on SoundCloud, we've got 18 versions of Yes Please. Right at the bottom, we've got minus alto sax one, but above that minus alto sax two. Up at the top, we've got it minus baritone sax. And what I'm going to do, just to get you a bit familiar with this music, and I've got, I've got a reason for this, I'm going to play you the first 20 seconds of it minus baritone sax, I'll pause it. Then I'm going to do the first 20 seconds of it minus drums and you'll hear the difference between the two. And the reason I want to do those two is, I want you to guess, imagine, that you're a young drummer. And what you want to do is play along with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra on Yes Please. You've already downloaded the music. You've got it beside your drum kit. You're looking at it on your music stand. And the reason that I want it to be a drummer um, is, as you'll hear from this first 20 seconds, it happens to start with a drum solo. On the music, it says, a la Buddy Rich. So, you're this 15 year old drummer in Darlington and you want to play your drum solo like Buddy Rich. So the first thing you do is you listen to how we've got it on this guide track. Here it comes. That's the metronome giving the timing. Here's the drum solo. And here comes the band. So that's the first 20 seconds of it, and then it happened not to have the baritone sax in it. Now, you're the young drummer, you think, I know what that sounds like, I've just listened to it. Let's play it without the drums, and I'm going to play along. So here it comes. There's the metronome to keep you in time, and you're playing your drum solo over that. And here comes the band. <laughs> Now, that's, I, I hope, a good example of uh, how a young musician, and for a young drummer, you could say young trumpeter, you could say uh, young saxophone player, young bass player, whatever you like. I'm going to ask you to imagine this time that you're a young saxophone player, and we've got these explainer videos that tell you about playing how to play the saxophone in a jazz orchestra. So I'm going to play you just the first one of these three um, to give you a rest from my voice and also to give you a feeling for the sort of resources that we've made available here. Josephine Davis, by the way, is an absolutely brilliant saxophonist and composer and, and star in her own right. And she's one of the um, professors at uh, Trinity Laban Conservatoire. But here she is doing a new skill which she learned since lockdown. She bought herself a, a video camera. She recorded this at home and you'll see um, you'll see her helping a young musician how to play the saxophone in a jazz orchestra. <laughs> I'm a saxophonist and composer, and today we're going to be looking at playing in the saxophone section in a jazz orchestra. I'll be demonstrating using the minus one junior chart, Yes Please, which you can find and download from the uh, NIJO Virtual Academy website. So you've got your part and your instrument, 
and the play along and the temptation is probably to get stuck straight in and play along with the recording immediately but that can lead to this kind of thing <laughs> to really nailing those notes is actually to slow way down. Put a metronome on, a slower tempo, as slow as you need to gain accuracy, and then gradually speed it up until you can play it at speed. So for example, this piece, Yes Please, is crotchet equals 200, which is pretty, pretty quick. So I'm going to halve that for the moment. Crotchet equals 100. Uh, this is the same passage, letter A. A one, two, three. <laughs> speed it up by about 15 BPM per try until I get to crotchet 200. And that means I'll really have it under my fingers. Secondly, you're going to really want to pay attention to the articulation. Many of the notes you see will have additional information such as staccato or tenuto markings or various types of accents. Listen to the recording very carefully and see if you can match the articulation. The more you do this, the more you'll sound like a section player. And if the whole section is doing the same thing, it will sound really punchy. Have a look at this passage of music whilst I play it. articulation, which means I would make the whole section sound quite sloppy. Now listen again. This time I played all the articulation and the sound was much more punchy. Lastly, remember to also pay attention to the dynamics no matter what part you're playing. I'm deliberately pausing it there now to, to say a public thank you to all these wonderful organisations who allowed us to spend their charitable money on uh, Plan B rather than Plan A. Usually it was a five minute phone call or, or a one line email and they, they've, they've been terrific. So that's the end of my demonstration of the Virtual Academy. Let me try and get myself back into uh, my presentation and um, hope that's right and just tell you where we are today and that'll take me another two or three minutes and I hope I won't have overrun too much Chris. So um, today we've got something over 500 users of whom about 30 are outside the UK. Um, more importantly this is now a fundamental part of our online curriculum in both our London and our regional academies who are still meeting every Saturday but of course over Zoom. But what happens over Zoom is that the music directors will say um, 
this is the piece we're going to do next week. Make sure you download it. Make sure you work on it. And email a recorded solo to me on Friday evening so that I can critique it on Saturday in the lesson. So we're really using the technology here. And I promise you that quite young people are using it very well indeed. We did this in a great hurry. Um, we got it out there and it's grown like topsy since what we need to do now is pause for breath and to use a word that the jazz industry is fairly unfamiliar with until I brought it in, we're going to productize it. Um, we, we do need to improve the user interface by demoing it for you. I, I, I cut through a few of the slight compl complexities. We need to improve the channel to market and we've realized that we, we should be talking to band leaders and educators rather than a student by student. We need a proper piece of feedback that says this is the bit we like and this is the bit we don't like, a, a user council. And we're going to have to start charging for this at some point. We can't keep doing this for free. And we actually believe that there's probably um, a serious commercial market for this outside the UK and, and in the USA. And we've actually got a community big band in Stockton, California. They're in that um, 30 international users at the moment giving us feedback. We need to turn it into an app. And um, I'm going to have to say this in front of Haydn, I'm afraid. Um, we'll have the money to do this or we won't, depending on whether we get what we bid for in the Arts Council's Cultural Recovery Fund um, round two, which we have applied for. And there's a very significant um, funding request in there to do all of those things. It's just worth saying this is where Nigel is today. But for the first time ever in a couple of months time, we will have a new artistic home. And this is going to give us a real boost to our standing and our, our ability to do things nationally. We've been invited to be a resident artistic company at a wonderful new cultural facility called Woolwich Works um, on the site of the old Royal Arsenal in Greenwich. Um, part of uh, it's been set up by the Royal Borough of Greenwich by the uh, by the council. And we'll be there as a resident company alongside the Chinake Orchestra, Punch Trunk Theatre and the Carlos Acosta Dance Company. And I think that's going to give us a great platform um, to go forward on. So I'm about to finish, but I would not be doing my job as, as chair of a small charity if I didn't say, please consider supporting us. We could really do with it. We need it.